Hi everyone, I'm going to start recording these section-by-section uh, -section explanations of the USD compliance notebook for Texas. That's more mainly related to gas stations. And uh, this is going to be very similar to what you get when you get, have an inspection, a PST inspection by TCQ or by UT Arlington or by the city of Dallas or city of Fort Worth or whoever is handling your um, PST inspections the, from the state. So uh, the cover, of course, facility name, uh, address, ID number, that's your facility ID, and owner name, and contact info. You can fill out that and keep this book and write your own notes. I'm not going to go over uh, the details. I'll come back to some of that stuff later. But this is very similar. If you look at this page here that I'm looking at, I'm zooming in and out so you know, you know where we're at. And this page covers almost everything that you will get when you get a PST inspection. Just pay attention to these numbers here. You see Chapter 334.7. You get a citation or a notice violation. They're going to write these codes there. So if you need to know more, you can go search that and, and read as many as you want. It's very, very uh, technical information in there that, that they put in these uh, EPA and TCQ regulations. So let's get started. So the first section I'm going to cover today would be about self-certification and registration. Some of you probably know that, but it's good to have a, a quick reminder of the three key things that we need to look at. The, the registration form that you have to fill out every year, the delivery certificate that you're going to have to display, and then and any, any uh, construction work that you need to do on the station like removing a tank or doing anything major underground or anything underground you have to apply for a 30-day notification so and as you can see here they might ask you for up to 60 months that's five years of record so you know don't throw anything uh, that that is related to your um, deliveries and things like that so i'm gonna go over this registration form quickly I'm not going to go through every single part. I'm just going to hit the key things. So the first section where you check if it's a corporation or individual who's filling out the form, number of employees, the facility information, and then here's where you need to write who's the owner and who's the operator. It's very important to, to, to write that. If it's the owner is the same as the operator, then you can check this box here. You can see here, mark here if same as owner. But if you, you know, the landlord and someone else is operating the station, make sure they fill out their information there and, and anything related to that. Uh, if we get into this part, that's that's one key thing. So I, I just checked mark this box because I want to talk about it. So either you're doing it because it's an annual registration, the most common one, or because it's initial registration, you just built the station, or you there's an ownership change. This is very critical that every time you have a change of ownership, or change of operator information, you need to update this form and send it there. Uh, this part of it is easy. It's a petroleum storage tank here. Most likely, if, if you happen to have a tire shop and has a, a tank where you have used oil and things like that, then, then yeah, that's, that's a different story there. We'll go over Class A and Class B. As you know, the new regulations now that no matter when you did the, the first time the training, then you have to take the updated one. And and um, I guess most of you did that. Here you answer yes to everything. But again, answering yes means that you have read and understood all these technical things. And if they write you a violation and you say, I didn't know, this, this would be their legal come back and say, you signed this, say that you have read and understood. It says, indicate responses to each question. It says, completion of this section is required. And it then, it, it assumes that you know that information, otherwise you won't sign it. Uh, financial insurance, we're gonna cover that later, deliver a certificate, and then we'll go through that. Uh, go through this part is where you don't have to fill out this form if you're just renewing your delivery certificate. 
but you have to fill it out if you're putting a tank out of order, see section two here, or you're adding a tank to the system or doing any major work, and then you're gonna have to, to update this form, or if you change a tank from plus into diesel, then you're gonna have to fill out the form and update all that information about the tank. Otherwise, you don't really need to fill out this every year. The delivery certificate, here's an example. The two key things I'm gonna hit here were the owner operator, the ID number. Uh, that's your owner ID. And the second part here is the facility ID. So the facility ID doesn't change. So that's the easiest way when you talk to a testing company or TCEQ, it's the easiest thing is to give them the facility ID to look up your, your uh, information. Uh, that would be the easiest one than giving them the store name or address and stuff like that. So this one, as you can see, it says Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. And here, UST installation at. So when the tank is installed on a facility, you have to keep this letter. It shows here the date of the installation. I'm just going to read the details here. Just pay attention to that. It says also all UST installations, repairs, and removals must be conducted by a registered UST contractor who has a licensed uh, installer or on-site supervisor at the, on the site. So, you know, you need to know who's registered. There's a list on the TCQ website for all the companies that are registered as A and B licensed, not UST operator owner. There's a different kind of licensing for UST construction uh, companies. And these are the companies that can actually install and remove tanks and do stuff like that. I'm going to stop here and then we can continue later and, and move into the second section and talk a little bit about financial insurance.